great big God. There's nothing he can't do. Uh, you're going to hear me say that quite a bit because our scriptures proclaim that truth. Weekly devotion today comes from the book of Numbers. We've done Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Today is Numbers, and that is a moment in time where God wants to stop and pause with his children that he just rescued from Egypt to light up this world, to bless this world, and he wants to count them. He wants to do a census, and so he counts. All right, we see perhaps millions of people, two to three million people that God takes account of, and he says, you are the ones that are going to be salt of the earth. And then he gets ready to put them into the promised land, into a land where there's a lot of evil taking place, people that don't know God, people that aren't worshiping God, they're worshiping false gods. He wanted his children to go in there. And so what happens is God says to Moses, select 12 spies, one from each tribe, choose a young uh, leader in your community to go spy out the land and tell us, is this worth going into? Is this what God has promised? And they see it. It's amazing. But yeah, all of a sudden they're struck with fear because the people living there, they are scared of them. And so out of the 12 spies, 10 spies come back and report to the people that we're scared. We can't do this. The people are going to wipe us out. We need to go back into bondage. We need to go back into slavery because that was better off than this, these people just killing us. And two spies, Joshua and Caleb, we know their names. They say, listen, everybody. We have a great big God and there's nothing he can't do. And if he wants us to be in this land to be the salt of the earth, then he will make it happen. Let's not give in to fear. Let's walk by faith. But yet what happens in the story, and it's concerning and it's disturbing, if you will, right? the 10 people are able to put fear into a whole nation where two people who are trying their best are unable to do that. And so... What happens with the children of Israel, they have to wander to the desert for 40 years in the wilderness. And even in those 40 years, the amazing truth in the book of Numbers is that God does remain faithful and he continues to provide and be there for his children. Even though they have this lack of faith, he continues to show them his bigness. So what I want to think about today, what I want you to think about today is how big is your God? How big is your God? How big is he? Joshua and Caleb said he's huge. The other 10 said, nope, we're going to live life in fear. We're not going to have faith in our big God. And we all have giants in our life. I believe this about you. I mean, we have giants that we're up against. And the question is, is how big is our God? Is he bigger than those giants or are those giants bigger than him? Is God going to work through the mess and bring blessing? Is God working through it or not? Is he big enough to handle it or not? In Jesus, you and I see the truth of our God, how big he is, his authority over everything that he encountered, and certainly, ultimately, right, his authority that he portrayed in coming back to life after being murdered, after being crucified on the cross. Right? Jesus, his authority, he is a great big God, and the truth of our faith is that Jesus was, he still is today, and the truth of our faith is that he is with us. So I don't know what it is that you are up against but I pray that you have the faith of Joshua and Caleb and know that there's nothing God can't do, that God is working in and through it, that God is bigger than the giant that you are facing. He is with you, so may you have courage and faith to believe that he is working through it like only he can. Be blessed to be a blessing.